Chapter 2 Biological Classification Since the dawn of civilization, there have been many attempts to classify living organism. It was done instinctively, not using criteria that were scientific, but born out of a need to use organisms for our own use, for food, shelter and clothing. Aristotle was the earliest to attempt a more scientific basis for classification. He used simple morphological characters to classify plants into trees, shrubs and herbs. He also divided animals into two groups, those which had red blood and those that did not. In Linnaeus time, a two-kingdom system of classification with Plantae and Animalia kingdoms was developed that included all plants and animals respectively. This system did not distinguish between the eukaryotes and prokaryotes, unicellular and multicellular organisms, and photosynthetic green algae and non-photosynthetic fungi-like organisms. Classification of organisms into plants and animals was easily done and was easy to understand. But a large number of organisms did not fall into either category. Hence, the two kingdom classification used for a long time was found inadequate. Besides, gross morphology, a need was also felt for including other characteristics like cell structure, nature of wall, mode of nutrition, habitat, methods of reproduction, evolutionary relationships, etc. Classification systems for the living organism have, hence, undergone several changes over the time. Though plant and animal kingdoms have been a constant under all different systems, the understanding of what groups or organisms be included under these kingdoms have been changing the number and nature of other kingdoms have also been understood differently by different scientists over the time. R.H. Whittaker in 1969 proposed a five kingdom classification. The kingdoms defined by him were named Monera, Protista, Fungi, Plantae and Animalia. The main criteria for classification used by him include cell structure, body organization, mode of nutrition, reproduction and phylogenetic relationship. Table 2.1 gives a comparative account of different characteristics of the five kingdom. The table 2.1 includes kingdom Monera, the cell type is prokaryotic, cell wall is non-cellulosic, polysaccharide plus amino acid, nuclear membrane is absent, body organization is cellular and mode of nutrition in Monera is autotropic, chemosynthetic and photosynthetic and heterotropic that is saprophytic and parasitic. In protista, the cell type is eukaryotic, cell wall is present in some, nuclear membrane is present, body organization is cellular and the mode of nutrition in protista is autotrophic, photosynthetic and heterotrophic. In fungi, the cell type is eukaryotic, cell wall is present with a chitin, nuclear membrane is present, body organization is a multicellular loose tissue. Uh, then mode of nutrition is heterotropic that is saprophytic and parasitic. Kingdom plantae uh, cell type is eukaryotic, cell wall is present of cellulose, nuclear membrane is present, body organization includes tissue or organ, mode of nutrition is autotrophic that is photosynthetic. Eukaryotic animalia, uh, eukaryotic is the cell type, Cell wall is absent, nuclear membrane is present, body organization is a tissue organ or organ system, whereas the mode of nutrition in animalia is heterotropic, that is holozoic, saprophytic, etc. The 
the three domain system has also been proposed that divides the kingdom monera into two domains leaving the remaining eukaryotic kingdoms in the third domain and thereby a six kingdom classification you will learn about this system in detail at higher classes let us look at this five kingdom classification to understand the issues and considerations that influence the classification system earlier classification system include bacteria blue green algae fungi mosses ferns gymnosperms and the angiosperms under plants the character that unified this whole kingdom was that all organisms included had a cell wall in their cells this place together groups which widely differed in other characteristics it brought together the prokaryotic bacteria and the blue green algae cyanobacteria with other groups which were eukaryotic it also grouped together the unicellular organisms and the multicellular ones say for example chlamydomonas and spirogyra were placed together under algae the classification did not differentiate between the heterotrophic group fungi and the autotrophic green plants though they also showed a characteristic difference in their cell wall composition the fungi had chitin in their cell walls while the green plants had a cellulose 6 cell wall when such characteristics were considered the fungi were placed in a separate kingdom kingdom fungi all prokaryotic organisms were grouped together under kingdom monera and the unicellular eukaryotic organisms were placed in kingdom protista kingdom protista has brought together chlamydomonas chlorella earlier placed in algae within plants and both having cell walls with paramecium and amoeba which were earlier placed in the animal kingdom which lack cell wall It has put together organisms which in earlier classifications were placed in different kingdom. This happened because the criteria for classification changed. This kind of changes will take place in future too depending on the improvement in our understanding of characteristics and evolutionary relationship. Over time an attempt has been made to evolve a classification system which reflects not only the morphological physiological and reproductive similarities but is also phylogenetic that is based on evolutionary relationship in this chapter we will study characteristics of kingdom monera protista and fungi of the viticer system of classification the kingdoms plantae and animalia commonly referred to as plant and animal kingdoms respectively will be dealt separately in chapters 3 and 4 kingdom monera bacteria are the sole members of kingdom monera they are the most abundant microorganisms bacteria occur almost everywhere hundreds of bacteria are present in a handful of soil they also live in extreme extreme habitats such as hot springs deserts snow and deep oceans where very few other life forms can survive many of them live in or on other organisms as parasites bacteria are grouped under four categories based on their shape the spherical coccus plural cocci the rod shaped bacillus plural bacilli the comma shaped vibrium plural vibrio and the spiral spirillium plural form spirillia though the bacterial structure is very simple they are very complex in behavior compared to many other organisms bacteria as a group show the most extensive metabolic diversity some of the bacteria are autotrophic that is they synthesize their own food from inorganic substrate they may be photosynthetic autotrophic or chemosynthetic autotrophic the vast majority of bacteria are heterotrophs that is they depend on other organisms or on dead organic matter for food archaea bacteria these bacteria are special since they live in some of the most harsh habitats such as extreme salty areas halophiles hot springs 
थर्मोएसिडोफाइल्स एंड मार्शी एरियाज मिथेनोजेन आरके बैक्टीरिया डिफर फ्रॉम अदर बैक्टीरिया इन हैविंग अ डिफरेंट सेल वॉल स्ट्रक्चर एंड दिस फीचर इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर देयर सर्वाइवल इन एक्सट्रीम कंडीशंस मिथेनोजेन्स आर प्रेजेंट इन द गट ऑफ सेवरल रूमिनेंट एनिमल्स सच एस काउज एंड बफेलोज एंड दे आर रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर द प्रोडक्शन ऑफ मिथेन बायोगैस फ्रॉम द डंक ऑफ दीज एनिमल्स यू बैक्टीरिया देर आर थाउजेंड्स ऑफ डिफरेंट यू बैक्टीरिया और ट्रू बैक्टीरिया दे आर कैरेक्टराइज बाय द प्रेजेंस ऑफ अ रिजिड सेल वॉल एंड इफ मोटाइल अ फ्लैजिलम द साइनो बैक्टीरिया ऑल्सो रिफर टू एज ब्लू ग्रीन एलगे हैव क्लोरोफिल ए सिमिलर टू ग्रीन प्लांट्स एंड आर फोटो सिंथेटिक ऑटोट्रॉफ्स द साइनो बैक्टीरिया आर यूनिसेलुलर कॉलोनियल और फिलामेंटिस फ्रेश वॉटर और मरीन और टेरिस्ट्रियल एलगे द कॉलोनीज आर जनरली सराउंडेड बाय जिलेटिनियस शीत they often form blooms in polluted water bodies some of these organisms can fix atmospheric nitrogen in specialized cells called heterocyst example nostoc and anabine chemosynthetic autotrophic bacteria oxidize various inorganic substances such as nitrates nitrites and ammonia and use the released energy for their atp production they play a great role in recycling nutrients like nitrogen phosphorus iodine and sulfur heterotrophic bacteria are most abundant in nature the majority are important decomposers many of them have a significant impact on human affairs they are helpful in making curd from milk production of antibiotics fixing nitrogen in legume roots etc some are pathogen causing uh, damage to the human beings crops farm animals and pets cholera typhoid tetanus citrus canker are well known diseases caused by different bacteria bacteria reproduce mainly by fission sometimes under unfavorable condition they produce spores they also reproduce by a sort of sexual reproduction by adopting a primitive type of dna transfer from one bacterium to the other the mycoplasma are organisms that completely lack cell wall they are the smallest living cells known and can survive without oxygen many mycoplasma are pathogenic in animals and plants kingdom protista all single celled eukaryotes are placed under protista but the boundaries of this kingdom are not well defined what may be a photosynthetic protistion to one biologist may be a plant to the another in this book we include chrysophytes dinoflagellates eucleonoids slime molds and protozoans under protista members of protista are primarily aquatic This kingdom forms a link with the others dealing with plants animals and fungi being eukaryotes the protistin cell body contains a well defined nucleus and other membrane bound organelles some have flagella or cilia protists reproduce asexually and sexually by a process involving cell fusion and zygote formation chrysophytes This group includes diatoms and golden algae decimates. They are found in fresh water as well as in marine environments. They are microscopic and float passively in water currents plankton. Most of them are photosynthetic. In diatoms the cell walls form two thin overlapping shells which foot fit together as in a soap box the walls are embedded with silica and thus the walls are indestructible thus diatoms have left behind large amount of cell wall deposits in their habitat this accumulation over billions of years is referred to as diatomaceous earth being gritty this soil is used in polishing filtration of oils and syrups diatoms are chief producers in oceans dinoflagellates 
These organisms are mostly marine and photosynthetic. They appear yellow, green, brown, blue or red depending on the main pigments present in their cells. The cell wall has stiff cellulose plates on the outer surface. Most of them have two flagella. One lies longitudinally and the other transversely in a furrow between the cell wall plates. Very often red dinoflagellate, example gonoalix, undergo such rapid multiplication that they make the sea appear red, red tides. Toxins released by such large numbers may even kill other marine animals such as fishes. Euglenoids Majority of them are fresh water organisms found in stagnant water. Instead of a cell wall, they have a protein-rich layer called pellicil, which makes their body flexible. They have two flagella, a short and a long one. Though they are photosynthetic in the presence of sunlight, when deprived of sunlight, they behave like heterotrophs by predating on other smaller organisms. Interestingly, the pigments of euglenoids are identical to those present in higher plants, example euglena. Slime moles. Slime moles are saprophytic protists. The moldy move, moves along decaying twigs and leaves engulfing organic material. Under suitable condition, they form an aggregation called plasmodium which may grow and spread over several feet. During unfavorable condition, the plasmodium differentiates and forms fruiting bodies bearing spores at their tips. The spore possesses true walls. They are extremely resistant and survive for many years, even under adverse condition. The spores are dispersed by air currents. Protozoans. All protozoans are heterotrophs and live as predator or parasites. They are believed to be primitive relatives of animals. They are four, there are four major groups of protozoans. Amoeboid protozoan. These organisms live in freshwater, seawater or moist soil. They move and capture their prey by putting out pseudopodia, false feet as in amoeba. Marine forms have silica shells on their surface. Some of them such as antamoeba are parasites. Flagellated protozoans. The members of these group are either free living or parasitic. They have flagella. The parasitic forms cause diseases such as sleeping sickness. Example, trypanosoma. Ciliated protozoans. These are aquatic Actively moving organisms, because of the presence of thousands of cilia, they have a cavity, gullet, that opens to the outside of the cell surface. The coordinated movement of rows of cilia cause the water laden with food to be steered into the gullet. Example, paramecium. Sporozoans. This include diverse organisms that have an infectious spore-like stage in their life cycle. The most notorious is the plasmodium, malarial parasite, which causes malaria, a disease which has a staggering effect on human population. Kingdom Fungi the fungi constitute a unique kingdom of heterotropic organisms. They show a great diversity in morphology and habitat. You must have seen fungi on a moist bread and rotten fruits. The common mushroom you eat and toadstool are also fungi. White spots seen on mustard leaves are due to parasitic fungus. Some uni unicellular fungi, example yeast, are used to make bread and beer. Other fungi causes diseases in plants and animals. Wheat rust causing puxnia is an important example. Some other source of antibiotics, example penicillium. Fungi are cosmopolitan and occur in air, water, soil and on animals and plants. They prefer to grow in warm and humid places. Have you ever wondered why we keep food in the refrigerator? Yes, it is to prevent food from going bad due to bacterial or fungal infections.
with the exception of yeast which are unicellular fungi are filamentous their body consists of long slender thread like structures called hyphae the network of hyphae is known as mycelium some hyphae are continuous tubes filled with multinucleated cytoplasm these are called as cnocytic hyphae others have septae or cross walls in their hyphae the cell walls of fungi are composed of chitin and polysaccharides most fungi are heterotrophic and absorb soluble organic matter from dead substrates and hence are called saprophytes those that depend on living plants and animals are called parasites they can also live as symbionts in association with algae as lichens and with roots of higher plants as mycorrhiza reproduction in fungi can take place by vegetative means fragmentation fragmentation fission and budding asexual reproduction is uh, is by a spore called conidia or sporangiospore or zoospores and sexual reproduction is by oospores ascospores and basidiospores the various spores are produced in distinct structures called fruiting bodies the sexual cycle involves the following three steps first fusion of protoplasm between two motile or non motile gametes called plasmogamy fusion of two nuclei called karyogamy and the third meiosis and zygote resulting in haploid spores when a fungus reproduces sexually two haploid hyphae of a compatible mating type come together and fuse in some fungi the fusion of two haploid cells immediately results in diploid cells 2n however in other fungi ascomycetes and basidiomycetes an intervening dikaryotic stage n plus n that is two nuclei per cell occurs such a condition is called dikaryon and the phase is called dikaryophase of fungus later the parental nuclei fuse and the cells become diploid the fungi form fruiting bodies in which reduction division occurs leading to formation of haploid spores the morphology of the mycelium mode of spore formation and fruiting body form the basis for the division of the kingdom into various classes phycomycetes members of phycomycetes are found in aquatic habitats and on decaying wood in moist and damp places or as obligate parasites on plants the mycelium is aseptate and cnocytic asexual reproduction takes place by zoospores motile or by aplanospores non motile these spores are endogenously produced in sporangium a zygospore is formed by fusion of two gametes these gametes are similar in morphology isogamous or dissimilar an isogamous or oogamous some common examples are mucor rhizopus the bread mold mentioned earlier and albugo the parasitic fungi on mustard ascomycetes commonly known as sac fungi the ascomycetes are mostly multicellular example penicillium or rarely unicellular example yeast saccharomyces they are saprophytic decomposers parasitic or coprophilous that is growing on dung e mycelium is branched and septate the asexual spores are conidia produced exogenously on the special mycelium called conidiophores conidia on germination produce mycelium sexual spores are called ascospores which are produced endogenously in sac like ascii these ascii are arranged in different types of fruiting bodies called asco 
carps. Some examples are Aspergillus, Claviceps and Neurospora. Neurospora is used extensively in biochemical and genetic work. Many members like morals and truffles are edible and are considered delicacies. Basidiomycetes Commonly known forms of Basidiomycetes are mushrooms, bracket fungi or puffballs. They grow in soil on logs and tree stumps and in living plant bodies as parasites. Example, rusts and smuts. The mycelium is branched and septate. The asexual spores are generally not found. But vegetative reproduction by fragmentation is common. The sex organs are absent. But plasmogamy is brought about by the fusion of two vegetative or somatic cells of different strains or genotypes. The resultant structure is dichoriotic which ultimately gives rise to basidium. Cariogamy and meiosis takes place in basidium producing four basidiospores. The basidiospores are exogenously produced on the basidium. The basidia are arranged in fruiting bodies called basidiocarps. Some common members are agaricus, mushroom, ustilago, smut and puxnia, rust fungus. Deuteromycetes, commonly known as imperfect fungi because only the asexual or vegetative phases of these fungi are known. When the sexual forms of these fungi were discovered, they were moved into classes they rightly belonged to. It is also possible that asexual and vegetative state have been given one name and placed under deuteromycetes and the sexual stage and placed under another class. Later, when the linkages were established, the fungi were correctly identified and moved out of deuteromycetes. Once perfect, that is sexual stages of the members of the deuteromycetes were discovered, they were often moved to ascomycetes and basidiomycetes. The deuteromycetes reproduce only by asexual spores known as conidia. The mycelium is septate and branched. Some members are saprophytes or parasites, while a large number of them are decomposers of litter and help in mineral cycling. Some examples are Alternaria, Coletotrichum and Trichoderma. Kingdom Plantae Kingdom Plantae includes all eukaryotic chlorophyll-containing organisms commonly called plants. A few members are partially heterotropic such as the insectivorous plants or parasites. Bladderwort and Venus flytrap are examples of insectivorous plants and cascuta is a parasite. The plant cells have an eukaryotic structure with prominent chloroplast and cell wall mainly made of cellulose. You will study the eukaryotic cell structure in detail in chapter 8. Plantae includes algae, bryophytes, pteridophytes, gymnosperms and angiosperms. Life cycle of plants has two distinct phases, the diploid sporophytic and the haploid gametophytic that alternate with each other. The length of the haploid and diploid phases and whether these phases are free living or dependent on others vary among different groups and plants. This phenomenon is called alteration of generation. You will study further details of this kingdom in the chapter 3. Kingdom Animalia This kingdom is characterized by heterotropic eukaryotic organisms that are multicellular and they lack their cell walls. They directly or indirectly depends on plant for food. They digest their food in an internal cavity and store food reserves as glycogen or fat. Their mode of nutrition is holozoic by ingestion of food. They follow a definite growth pattern and grow into adults that have a definite shape and size. Higher forms show elaborate sensory and neuromotor mechanism. Most of them are capable of locomotion. 
The sexual reproduction is by copulation of male and female followed by embryological development. Salient features of various phyla are described in the chapter 4. Viruses, viroids, prions and lichens. In the Five Kingdom classification of Whittaker, there is no mention of lichens and some acellular organisms like viruses, viroids and prions. These are briefly introduced here. All of us who have suffered the ill effects of common cold or flu know what effect viruses can have on us, even if we do not associate it with our condition. Viruses did not find a place in classification since they are not considered true living. If we understand living as those organisms that have a cell structure, the viruses are non-cellular organisms that are characterized by having an inert crystalline structure outside the living cell. Once they infect a cell, they take over the machinery of the host cell to replicate themselves, killing the host. Would you call the viruses living or non-living? Virus means venom or poisonous fluid. Dmitry Avanovsky in the year 1892 recognized certain microbes as caudal organisms of the mosaic disease of the tobacco. These were found to be smaller than bacteria because they pass through the bacteria-proof filters. M. W. B. Jernick in the year 1898 demonstrated that the extract of infected plants of tobacco could cause infection in healthy plants and named the new pathogen virus and called the fluid as contagium vivum fluidum, that is infectious living fluid. W. M. Stanley in the year 1935 showed that the viruses could be crystallized. And the crystal consists largely of proteins. They are inert outside their specific host cell. Viruses are obligate parasites. In addition to proteins, viruses also contain genetic material that could be either RNA or DNA. No virus contains both RNA and DNA. A virus is a nucleoprotein and the genetic material is infectious. In general, viruses that infect plant have single-stranded RNA and viruses that infect animals have either single or double-stranded RNA or double-stranded DNA. Bacterial viruses or bacteriophages, viruses that infect the bacteria are usually double-stranded DNA viruses. The protein called uh, coat called capsid made up made of small subunit called capsomeres, protects the nucleic acid. These capsomeres are arranged in helical or polyhedral geometric forms. Viruses cause disease like mumps, smallpox, herpes and influenza. AIDS in humans is also caused by a virus. In plants, the symptoms can be mosaic formation, leaf rolling and curling, yellowing and vein clearing, dwarfing and stunted growth. Viroids In 1971, Theodiner discovered a new infectious agent that was smaller than viruses and caused potato spindle tuber disease. It was found to be a free RNA. It lacked the protein coat that is found in viruses, hence the name viroid. The RNA of the viroid was of low molecular weight. Prions In modern medicine, certain infectious neurological diseases were found to be transmitted by an agent consisting of abnormally folded protein. The most notable disease, diseases caused by the prions are bovine spongiform Encephalopathy, that is BSE, commonly called as mad cow disease in cattle, and it is analogous variant, uh, it's analogous variant CR Jacob disease, that is CJD in humans. Lichens. Lichens are the symbiotic association that is mutually useful association between algae and fungi. 
the algal component is known as phycobiont and the fungal component is known as mycobiont which are autotrophic and heterotrophic respectively algae prepare food for fungi and fungi provide shelter and absorb mineral nutrients and water for its partner so close is their association that if one saw a lichen in nature one would never imagine that they had two different organisms within them lichens are very good pollution indicators as they do not grow in polluted areas i hope you all enjoyed the lecture i hope you enjoyed listening the reading so thank you so much